Hello, welcome to Zim Capture. I'm inventor Dan Zim. And Zim at zimjs.com is an open source framework for making interactive media on the HTML canvas using JavaScript and CreateJS. In this capture, we're going to take a look at how to animate something, how to move something with code. So let's dig right into the code here. Clitum. Well, let's make something we can animate. For instance, we could animate uh, our box is equal to a new zim.rectangle. And we'll make it 150 by 150. And we'll make it frame.pink. Punk. <laughs> frame.pink. That's just some handy colors I've stored on the frame object that makes the zim colors. You would just put in any normal color in there with this you know, as a string, you know, quote, red or what have you. So now we'll center this on a stage. Box.center on the stage, like so, and let's see what it looks like. Ooh, box on stage, great. So let's try moving the box. Box dot move, and we'll move it back to zero comma zero, that's the corner, top left corner, and how long do we want to take to move it there? How about two seconds? So that's 2,000 milliseconds. Ooh, aren't we exact? We save that, and let's take a look. We'll refresh here. Whee! And there it goes. Now the box starts off slow, goes faster, and slows down as it approaches. That's called the ease. So it's easing in and easing out. Very natural looking. And we can play with the ease by, well, why don't we try a back in. Okay, these are different easing equations that we have. Now back goes backwards. Uh, so when we're easing in like this, it goes backwards, and then it goes to where, it, where it's supposed to go. And let's save this and see what the effects are. So we save that. It goes backwards and whoop, off to the corner. Backwards and whoop, off to the corner. And we can put them on both sides, out. So now back in, out, we'll apply that back on both sides. Back. Uh, right. We. Wow. Okay, and there's all sorts that you can play with, things like elastic and bounce and uh, different types of equations to uh, make that happen. And these are the equations that all these tween engines use, and they come from tween.js in the Zim J or in the CreateJS series, but they were also available in Flash and in Greensock and, and so forth, and they're the same equations to do this kind of thing. They were Robert Pen Penner equa equations at one point, uh, but before that, they were just traditional physics equations. All right, so that's good for move. One more thing we could do is when it reaches the end there, let's just, let's not go back out. When it reaches the end, we can call a function. So we can just say function, round brackets, squiggly brackets, and inside these squiggly brackets, we might say box or stage dot remove child box. And that's not all. Let's put this on more than one line so we can see it a bit better. We remove the box, but this happens later. So we'll also want to stage dot update like that to make sure that we update the stage after that box is removed. So we save that and we refresh here. And there it goes up to the <laughs> How rewarding is that? Up to the... Ah, it's gone. Okay, so that is something that we can do as well. We can call a function when the animation finishes. Now there's all sorts of things to do. Let's comment this out for now. And we will turn to a Zim animate. So that looks like this. Box.animate. And animate allows us to animate any number of properties including X and Y, which we were doing up in the in the move. Move is short, a great shortcut for if you want to do X and Y, because you can just pass in X and Y. But if you want to animate, you pass in instead an object. And the object, you put in things like, hey, let's change the alpha up to 1. That means we should start with the box dot alpha equals 0. Can you imagine what we're going to do? So we won't be able to see the box. And now we'll animate its alpha in how long? Let's see, how about in one second? So we save that up. 
and refresh here. Ooh, the box animates its alpha property. It fades in. How about we do the scale as well? Say box.scale zero. The scale method here is a Zim method that is just a convenience method. It, it, what it's doing in behind is really saying box.scale x equals zero and box.scale y equals zero. I've always found it annoying to have to do both of those. And then we can animate the scale here. Scale colon up to one as well. Now, if you wanted to, you could animate the scale X only, or the scale Y only. Um, you can animate them individually, but Zim animate allows you a convenience function or a convenience uh, property in here, parameter called scale, and it will animate both the scale X and the scale Y. So let's check that out. We refresh. Ooh, that's a little bit ugly. Now, it might not be too bad if it were, say, up in the top left corner and kind of animating out. But we probably want to scale. You see the registration point of a rectangle by default is top left corner. We want to scale from the center. So we want center reg up here. That centers the box on the stage as well as centers the registration of the box and adds it to the stage. So we save that and refresh. And now the box scales from the center of the box, like so. How about we animate the rotation as well? So in here, comma, rotation. So any property we can animate. Rotation 360. And we refresh here. Whoa. Wow. OK, so what else can we do with animation? There's a lot of things, so let's go take a look. We go to the Zim site, pizzazz, and hit the docs, and type in anim. And here we are at animate. I told you there's lots of things. So we copy this, and come in here, and paste it above our animate. Oh, boy. All right, first of all, the, the very first parameter is called the target. So when you use zim.animate, you would then pass in what object as a target that you want to animate. Like, what are you animating the box? So that would be zim.animate box. But since we're using the zim method, the animate method, the zim fourth method, animate, we uh, no longer need the target. So the very first parameter is called an obj. And you see that? There is the OBJ. That's the animation object. The second parameter is the time, followed by the easing. And we saw some easing before. Followed by a call. So that's the function that we'll call. Followed by some parameters that we can pass through to that function. Followed by a wait. So if we want to wait a certain amount of time and then run the animation, we can. Let's try that out. So to be able to access these a bit more easily without putting null null, let's turn to the Zim Duo technique of passing in a single configuration object. So there's an object, and we'll end with an object there. And now we have to put in each of the parameter names. So this is obj, colon, and that ends there. And so what we'll do is we'll put these on multiple lines so we can see them a bit better. What is a 1,000? A 1,000 was the time colon. There, is this getting easier? Take a look now. And what do we want to get to? How about wait? Let's just do the wait. Wait, colon. How long do we want to wait? Let's wait a second. Hey, wait a second. Okay, so we're going to wait a second, sitting at a scale in an alpha of zero, and then we will animate in the box. So we save that up. I refresh. If you want some drama. Okay, so that's wait. Let's not wait for the next one. A loop. Let's loop it. A loop colon true. And we save that up and refresh here. Refresh. Oop. Oop. <laughs> Oop. Oh, kidok. So there it is looping. Uh, next. 
loop count. We can say how many times to loop to, uh, imagine. Yeah, so loop count colon three, it would do that three times and then the square would be there. Loop call, what that does is it calls a function after every single loop because the call happens only after all the animation is done. The loop call happens each time it loops. I don't think it happens the last time it loops. You have to rely on the call there. So, well, I mean, it's calling sort of at the loop. So um, once the, that last loop is finished, you then rely on the call parameter. Loop params, that's what you pass to the loop call. Rewind, oh, let's try a rewind. What does a rewind do? Rewind colon true. And we save this up and Whoa, neat. Okay, so that kind of stuff can be quite handy. And there's rewind, rewind wait. So do you want to wait and then rewind? So let's try a rewind wait, comma, rewind wait, colon, well, we'll do 500 milliseconds. We save that up and refresh. Up it goes, waits, down it goes. Up it goes, wait, down it goes. Up it goes, wait, etc. Uh, by the way, there was a loop wait. I think we might have missed that one. So you can wait after each loop as well. So loop call, or rewind, rewind, wait, rewind call. So you can call a function as it's rewinding as well and the parameters to pass into that. And you can also animate sequences. Uh, now, I think this is uh, this is going on a little bit long, this capture, so rather than take you through sequences, maybe we can take a look at that in a, a mid-level and a mid-level capture at some point to see. There is a there is a Zim um, a Zim bit that shows you how you can do sequences, so you're welcome to go find that. A ticker, if you're animating a property that doesn't have a stage, like you're just animating a, a number, then you would turn the ticker to false. That's a bit advanced, but uh, there you go. Props. Uh, CreateJS had this thing where you could pass in props, and I've left that in there for, you know, just so that it works if anybody needs it the old way. You can turn this into animate stuff in CSS as well. Protect means uh, it, if it's looping, it won't allow anything else to make this thing animate while it's looping. That's it to true by default. If you don't want that, if you would rather some other animation to take over, then you can set protect to false. But just watch, then you've got two animations going, including this loop, and you run into problems. Override is similar. Override just means that if I start another animation, the old animation ends. And that by default is true, unless a loop or a rewind is on, in which case uh, it won't be overridden. So just some nuances of, of animation there. Hey, that's great. You guys, we did really, really well. Uh, wow. And this thing is still going. Womp, 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 womp. And uh, it'd be good of you to try out some animation, see what you can make. And take a look at the Zim bits as well. If we go into the documentation, here's animate. And we just scroll down. There's some examples of that, all sorts of information. And then we hit the bits you can see that there's 25 different bits that talks about that talk about animating there we are animating various properties we're animating things in there we're you know we're swiping animating uh, we're animating a girl jumping up and down there's the sequence one so heck we can just take a quick peek okay there's an animation that that's doing sequences etc all right i'm inventor dan zen have a great day enjoy zim at zimjs.com ciao